fish on? Yeah. All right, get her in the boat. I was just thinking, uh, maybe there's no morning bite. <laughs> and then I thought, I think I'm going to try and fish up in the column a little bit. So I reeled up and then like one jig. Something must have been looking at it down there and followed it up. Tire them out. Yeah. This is on the uh, white tube jig again, so single hook. This would be a good last day in the park catch. Whoa! Let's see what we got here. It's almost at the surface. Right there. Go again. Big pike. Big pike. Look at that. Look at the size of his mouth. Big deep pike. Face, but oh I was gonna water water bomb them here Right up close, let's see. Hero shot him. Big Mike! There you go. <clears throat> there he goes. That's what you get from messing around with the water column. <laughs> That's still pretty deep, I think. This wasn't right on bottom. Well, first fish of the day. First, biggest. Most, I'm like I'm winning everything right now. <laughs> dirty pike don't count. What? <laughs> you can't call them dirty pike. They're, that's minus one point. Minus one fish. <laughs> All right. Where are we going to do that drift again? I've been keeping an eye on the weather systems this morning. Uh, we were up we were up pretty early actually. Six o'clock we were out fishing by ten past seven or leaving our camp at ten past seven. Um, but all morning all sort of to the east of us there's been this dark bit of weather system. Um, so right now that is to the south and the west and I think that one's blowing right at us there was another one that blew through just over to the east of us um, but I'm hoping that we don't have delays for our flight based on a pile of rain coming in I think it would not be very exciting to sit around at the beach oh I'm on zoom still eh big close up of my sideburns or what I don't think it would be a lot of fun <clears throat> to sit around on the beach in the rain wondering if your plane's going to come by or not. Coffee. I made my cereal and I didn't have enough water to fill that. And. Oh, not. Oh, yeah, we're out of oil here. So I just added a bit more water just to top this guy up. He hasn't really been hitting the spot for me out here, but those um, I brought in some of those instant latte packs, and those were pretty good. I think because they're creamy and rich, 
I might consider those on my next camping trip. WorkSharp sent a couple of these guided fuel sharpeners to Chris before we came out on this trip. And I actually haven't really had any downtime until now while we're waiting for the plane, but I definitely have been hard on some of my edge tools um, and also my axe. So I think I'm going to take advantage of the peace and quiet and touch up all my blades and then that way on my next adventure I won't be going in with a dull blade. I'll have already sharpened and taken care of everything here. Cool. Um, I did watch a video that these guys produced uh, before coming out here so I have a pretty good idea of the features of this sharpener and how to use it. It's a pretty good design from what I had seen online. I almost bought one of these not too long ago um, and I didn't so I was pretty excited that they sent two to Chris. You can see it's, it's not a bad size so it's pretty slim and it would fit in your pack. It's already got some rosin on the strop, so if you've already got a sharp blade and you just need to strop it, you can just strop it on the leather strop side. There is a um, coarse and a fine diamond. There's also this um, ceramic, and you can move the ceramic to different um, edges, so there's fine, uh, coarse and then there's also a grooved one here for fish hooks you can sharpen up your fish hooks so I think for this knife here which has been holding its edge really well I'm just gonna pass it on the fine ceramic and the nice thing about this guide is that it has a built-in 20 degree angles on all the edges so you can start your blades off and then if you keep that angle, um, it should be pretty set as you go across the sharpener. up real fast. That's great. And I can just drop it. And that one's all all touched up. Is it shaving sharp? I don't know if I can get this in frame here. Where are we? Yep. There goes my hair. Shaving sharp. So this one had a pretty good blade to, or a pretty good edge to start with, and then I just touched it all up real nice. I've definitely been in burnt over forests before. Um, sometimes as a tree planter or working in contracts um, in the Northwest Territories and elsewhere um, but maybe haven't really been as fully immersed in a in a burn regulated ecosystem as I have been on this trip and I've been finding it really interesting to see how um, everything grows back after a burn and just some misconceptions that I might have had and that other people might have about a forest fire. So I think, um, you know, if you've ever seen a Smokey the Bear commercial or other depictions of forest fires, you think that there's a forest and then all the trees burn and then you just have nothing. Just like flat, burnt out ground. Um, 
but that's not really the case at all. From what I've seen, most of the time you'll have a fire and even if all the trees burn, they don't burn up. They burn and they die and, and you can see behind me this area had a pretty big fire go through and it killed all, all of the mature trees. But it didn't burn them up. Um, it scarred them badly enough or burnt off the needles or they each one just torched and then the fire moved along. And so most of the carbon and the organic matter that's tied up in that tree is still there as a tree and is going to persist over time. And eventually that tree will fall and rot into the ground. Um, you can see how different plants are really adapted to come back very very quickly after a burn. So for example fireweed is named fireweed because after a fire goes through it's often one of the um, plants that comes back in the most abundance. Blueberries are famously uh, abundant in burnt over areas so a few years after a forest fire you'll get a really good um, growth of blueberry plants and then you get great blueberry crops. The raspberries that you've seen in these videos they come back after the fires um, and and other plants that I don't recognize I see them in huge abundance. So one cool thing is uh, jack pine trees. There's a jack pine tree behind me. They have um, these hard gray cones. Well they're not they're gray when they age they're greenish when they're fresh. And those cones grow but they don't just open at the end of the season and throw their seeds because the tree would be wasting its time to broadcast seed in a forest where there's already lots of jack pines growing. So those cones will persist on the tree for a really long time and they uh, have evolved in such a way that a certain temperature of heat actually triggers them to open up and drop their seeds. So jack pine trees when a forest fire goes through and the tree torches and there's all that heat underneath them, they release their seeds. Some of the seeds will get burnt for sure, um, but they'll fall onto ground that has been freshly burnt over and has no competition for the tree to grow. So you can see what probably happened behind me is the fire came through and the jack pine trees released their seeds. And this is a pure carpet of jack pine seedlings hundreds of them and now what's going to happen is these guys are all going to duke it out with each other and maybe one of these hundreds is going to grow to be that mature tree behind me and that one in turn will be the one that drops seed uh, the next time that a fire comes through this area. So you can see that all the cones on this jack pine tree have opened up and thrown their seed. And this tree, at the time the fire went through, had hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of cones on it. So that would be a huge quantity of seed that would get thrown from the tree. Over here there's a jack pine tree that's lying in the water and maybe it was there at the time that the fire went through and it did not get hot and it did not reach that critical temperature at which it would open its cones. So you just saw the opened cones. These are cones that never opened. You can see they're quite a bit tighter. Kind of a J-shaped or a curved cone and they did not get triggered by fire to open. It was actually, um, well, my finger is really blurry. It was one of these little hooked cones that I um, got tangled in my Voyager shirt and it kind of ripped a tear in it. So I'm gonna have to sew that up. There's our taxi.